High Tech Oils. Available from Auto One, Sprint Auto Parts, and all leading independent auto stores. On today's show, we return to Sydney Motorsport Park for continued round four coverage of the Shannons Nationals. This week, featuring the Jayco Australian Formula 4 Championship, the Australian GT Trophy, and the Australian Formula 3 Premier Series. This is Speed Week. We're back at Sydney, the sun is shining and the Shannon's Nationals has again presented an awesome mix of racing cars to put on a show. For the first time in Nationals history, both of Australia's top wins and slicks formulas are on the same program. The intense fight between Tim Macro and Chris Anthony for Aussie F3 honours to be joined by the wild slipstreaming antics of the young guns in Cam's Jaco Australian F4. Meanwhile, the ever-evolving fight in the Australian GT Trophy Series continues this weekend as the field continues to chase hometown hero, Audi driver, Greg Taylor. From Sydney's home of speed, this is round four of the Shannon's Nationals. Hi everyone, the sun is shining, the race cars are on the track and it's round four of the Shannon's Australian Motor Racing Nationals presented by Penrite Oils from Sydney Motorsport Park. Good afternoon everyone, Chad Nylon joining me in commentary for this one and the CAMS Jayco Australian Formula 4 Championship, Chadley, joining the show for the first ever time. This is an exciting weekend. Out there on the grid we see three young stars from three different teams. They're definitely excited about racing here at Sydney Motorsport Park. We're used to seeing Formula 4 on the undercard with the supercars and with the opening two rounds at Simmons Plains at Phillip Island at Leaves with a point score that looks like this to West Aussie Jordan Love on top. His BRM teammate Will Brown sitting in second position and Nick Rowe from AGI Sport down there in third. They have been the three to watch. Racing for the first time this year are a couple of familiar names from 2015. Teenagers Lewis Leeds and Harry Hayek have both been living the dream in England, racing in British F4 this year. I was over there for about four months. Unfortunately, uh, my, my stint came, uh, it ended a bit early. Uh, the team unfortunately uh, ran out of money, uh, so we stopped racing after round three. It's been really good to go over there and experience and I guess live by yourself and the racing's different and I've made a lot of friends, so I'm very grateful for the experience and the opportunity. The opportunity came uh, after I raced in Mexico in a one-off race as support class for, uh, for the F1 race. Um, I won that race over there and Red Bull approached me and. Uh, yeah, somehow after that became a Red Bull Junior driver and um, it just opened up doors and opportunities and um, I was able to, I'm able to be lucky enough to race in uh, British F4. Our last race was uh, at Croft, um, I was able to win the second race and it was actually a 1-2 with another Aussie Zane Goddard so um, yeah we've, we've been really successful since we've been over there. Um, we've had two 1-2s already this year and um, hopefully we just keep going. So cars now out on the track trying to get some heat into these hand-cooked tyres. We're looking at the AGI support teenage star of Nick Rowe. Took pole position here this weekend, won the first race. But they're out on track right now, Richard, for their third and final race of the weekend. Let's check out some highlights, though, of the second race. It was the reverse grid race and a great start. For Will Brown, who didn't go too well in that first race this weekend, so needed to make that jump early. Yeah, it started uh, third for this one after finishing fourth in race one. Got a brilliant start. Unfortunately, Harry Hayek fired off at turn two. So reverse top six for this. And then there was this amazing scrap for the race lead side by side out of turn three. So the car's galore entry dropped back towards the bottom of the hill. He was overtaken by Lewis Leeds, but then Leeds struck drama. So this is going on the front straight. We're on board with Nick Rowe, swings to the inside, frantic action. At over 200 k's down towards the flat first corner here. When you've got wings and slicks, you can do that. And it kicked off down here at turn two with the teammates, Fallon and Leeds, into each other. And unfortunately, Dream Motorsport star was out of the race. Yeah, dramas for the Dean Randall-led team. Contact between those two cars. And unfortunately, Lewis's charge ended up parked alongside. Will Brown got the win. The fight for second, though, was amazing side by side. Yeah, that was a great start to the day, obviously. Yesterday we've been struggling for pace, so we had a look over the car over the night and seemed to find something. So to take a win out of today, we'll be looking forward to the next race. 
having a cracking season so far. He was the favourite coming into season 2016 with the BRM squad. And the Toowoomba based man will be one to watch out for. But it's Nick Rowe's favourite track, he'd have to say. Won his first race here 12 months ago by a whopping 12 seconds. And this is how they line up for the third and final race. Yeah, and the hometown uh, racetrack for ATI Sport local team, so they'll be looking for a big performance. Lead still goes from second in this one, despite his dramas in race two earlier today. So he's a real contender for this. Harry Hayek from third, we want to watch. We've got to keep an eye on Will Brown, who starts a little bit further back down the field, Chad. Great field, very competitive. Oh, that was an awkward start, wasn't it, for Lewis Leeds creeping forward at the beginning. Great start, Everingham looks for the inside and might just get the overlap on approach down towards turn one. Hasn't quite got enough. Hayek floats around the outside, Leeds on the defensive early. Everingham was brilliant but got squeezed down to that yellow line and had to back out of it and it cost him track position. There's the cars galore, Team BRM number 99 car. Good start again from Will Brown. He's launching these things very, very well. The JRD Racing Development car goes Ooh. through. That's a big slide further back in the field. But everyone's clean through turns one, two, and three. I think that was Fallon. And I think he's got damage to the right front side of that wing as we go on board with Conroy. Down at turn four. A little bit sideways. These cars do skate around quite a lot. You can see that ahead of him through turn five. It's quite a soft hand cooked tyre they run, but it still takes a lap or two to get tyre temperature up in these cars. They don't produce an enormous amount of downforce, so they do have to work them quite hard to get tyre temperature. So the first lap, you can see the car starting to grip up now as they head round the back of Corporate Hill. Oh, that was tight. Denton, wow. the South Aussie, had a bit of a look. He was fighting with Jack Smith, the Queenslander. The two did very well at the back of Corporate Hill not to hit each other. Josh Denton's been a big improver this year, karting champion out of Adelaide. He's been good fun to watch. Working with Team BRM, the defending champions in the Camps, uh, Camps Jaco Australian Formula 4 Championship. But the AGI Sport car leads the way. Nick Rowe, very good opening lap. Conroy, out of the final corner, looking pretty solid as well. But I think I saw Fallon running wide through the complex of the last couple of corners. Will Brown, Toowoomba based young man, racing also in the Toyota 86 series. we right on board with him. Six gear, hold it flat, hopefully, through this part of the track. Definitely on a new set of tyres in qualifying, but by the time the third and final race gets around, that becomes more and more challenging. And these cars, don't they make the bumps noticeable through turn one? Oh. As we see a brake lock up from Conroy up into turn two. Gets it stopped in turn though, and Everingham goes up the inside. So good side-by-side -side battle. Conroy, despite that little mistake, will hold on. But that onboard was pretty telling through turn one. Cars are moving around a lot early in the race and really affected by the bumps. You could see how smooth Will Brown was with his inputs on the steering wheel to keep that car flowing and keep the corner speed up. So important in these junior wings and slicks open wheelers. Great start from Rowe though, Chad. Using that experience he's got in these cars. Probably one of the most experienced in the field now with cold tyre pace and pulling away out in front. Let's check out some replays at the start. Leeds car, he did get that thing pulled up, but was very tardy on the shift. Oh, a lot of these times these cars can be a little bit awkward to try and shift with those paddles. You can see Everingham got a great run on him, but Leeds lucky, you'd have to say there, Richard, to hang on to second position through the opening corner. Yeah, and Everingham unlucky not to benefit from a brilliant start. Launched really well. This is from Nick Rowe looking back. Really good shot. You can see Everingham there. He was on for second for a while, but just got squeezed down by Leeds. Probably fair racing move. Just ran out of room on the opening lap and had to cede that position. This battle, this battle is absolutely going wild right now. Jordan Love, the cork in the bottle. Josh Conroy, part of a three-car Dream Motorsport operation this weekend. Still loose down at the bottom at turn four and Everingham part of this battle as well. Conroy struggling just a little bit. He had oversteer up at turn two a couple of laps ago. Struggling for rear grip in this car a little bit and that's why he's under pressure. Everingham will have a look down the inside at six. Conroy pressing so hard, he's just missing the odd apex here or there, and he's just lost touch with the Team BRM car in front. This is a good scrap though, and for a defensive drive, he's doing a very nice job. Jack Smith part of this battle, Everingham in the Citchrome car, caught in the middle. I've been oh so impressed with his debut Whoa. year as he slides out at turn nine, and Smith will capitalise. What a shame. Just 15 years of old, Everingham, he should have been second in this race had he just made that jump towards the inside of Lewis Leeds at the beginning wasn't to be. Hard to believe that anyone born in the year 2001 to be <laughs> racing an open wheeler. But that's what's the, uh, I guess, the beauty about this category is they tick off another lap. The battle at the front, it's getting closer. 
Yeah, they're just starting to hunt down Nick Rowe now, aren't they? So as everyone's pace is normalised and Rowe's cold tyre advantage has diminished a little bit, the two are catching him. So Harry Hayek back in Formula 4, so too Lewis Leeds. These two have spent some time in the respective British Championships this year. So they're race fit and ready to go and looking really good. And Will Brown, who won brilliantly in race two, just in behind in that 99 car for Team BRM. We should mention Thomas Randall overseas doing a brilliant job in British Formula 3. Jordan Lloyd on the road to India and the States doing a superb job in USF 2000. So graduates from last year's championship, Chad, really kicking goals in international open wheel formula. Yeah, I think Australia can be proud of their F4 alumni doing great things overseas. This is that moment once again for the Synchrome star. Just caught the actual inside of the kerb on the way in and sent the back end around. Big four wheel slide and that was enough for Smith to capitalise and move on up as we go back on board with Conroy. Hasn't been a great weekend for Jordan Love, the championship leader. It was so impressive at Simmons Plains with Phillip Island, especially getting the better of his teammate Will Brown. But this weekend, I don't know what it is, but he just hasn't found the speed, the West Aussie. And Conroy's got a great run on him down the front straight. So too, Smith. Yeah, it's a three-car oh. tow. So there were a couple of cars that had the benefit from the BRM car wow. in front. This is big, round the outside at Turn 1. Over 200 k's, Conroy commits and holds on. And he actually turns out to be on the right racing line for turn two. And down the inside goes the ATI car, two deep. There's contact and they're both off the road. It was never going to work. Conroy throws his hands up in the air. Devastated with the outcome. He did all the right moves there, Josh Conroy. Brilliant move around the outside at turn one. Unfortunately, an innocent party with the other car barreling up the inside and it was never going to stop. Well, that's a shame. And all of a sudden, Brenton Grove is elevated up the order. Brand new livery on the Grove Group car this weekend. Oh, the championship oh, leader no. caught up in it too. This is exactly not what he needed. He's been putting together an amazing season so far. Well, he really was the meat and the sandwich there, wasn't he? There wasn't much Jordan Love could do with that. As we see safety car boards and flags, that's why Lewis Leeds is trying to get some heat into his hand-cooked tyre. So let's have another look at this. Down the inside, big move. So Love, the overtake on Jordan Love was probably okay, but after that, didn't look like that red AGI Sport car was gonna stop. Well, this will be interesting. Check it out from Conroy's point of view. See, Conroy was moving over to the left as well, trying to cover off. Oh, oh wow, that's, that's heavy contact. Bigger than I initially thought. So Conroy was moving over, trying to cover uh, Jordan Love, and unfortunately, you didn't realise that Smith is trying to come through as well at the same time. We get set for the restart. Riding on board with the man who will likely be taking the championship lead after that crash. Will Brown, green the flag, flag back in the air. Look and at the snake. This is going to get cagey here. That was good news for Everingham. He picked up a bunch of spots as a result. Yeah, he's driven really well in this race. It's just brought the field back to Nick Rowe. So let's see what he's like on a restart. Oh. Harry Hyatt looks down the inside at turn two, but Rowe's up for that. Covers his line, but oh. goes too deep. How's Lewis Leeds? Two in one corner, goes to the race lead. That was superb racing. Saw the opportunistic move. Nick Rowe was a little bit too deep, had a big slide, and Leeds got two places in one. That was a crystal ball moment. It was as if he could see the future happening ahead of him. Read it like a book, and then just waltzed on through to the lead. Great move. Simon Fallon now. Got his hands full with Brendan Grove. The battle at the front not complete just yet. And Everingham pouring on the pressure to Will Brown. Hey, the stakes are high in the category, aren't they, Chad? There's so much pressure at the front of the field. In fact, all the way through it to get these race and championship victories to set yourself up for a future career in the sport. And Lewis Leeds, who's come back to the category this weekend, he's yet to win in Australian Formula 4. So he now leads a race having come back into the category for what is at the moment a one-off drive. This is an enormous job. Nick Rowe, though, he's got plenty of time to try and attack and work his way past. Needs to set this move up here through the last corner. Hayek and Brown along for the ride. Only a couple of weeks ago, he was winning in Yorkshire, up in England. He's won in Mexico, supporting the Formula 4, uh, support, supporting Formula 1, I should say. And now we've got a five-car battle for the lead. Leeds looking pretty up front. Everingham tucked in behind Will Brown and Hayek. The Sydney sider wants a piece of the action. He draws level with the 18-year-old. Oh, nearly contact. It was, he actually backed off and it got a huge amount of aero wash and unsettled the car. Yeah, and he got curb on the inside as well. So he had a huge oversteer moment through turn one at 200k, but held on to it. Good catch. 
and they both drove away out of that corner, but that could have been very, very large. And that's just given Lewis Leeds a vital car length or two break in the lead of the race. You saw the effect of the slipstream, Chad, down the start-finish straight. It's so effective here at Sydney Motorsport Park with that fast entry out of Turn 12. So that was wild. Have a look at this. Here's Nick Rowe. Knowing he's under pressure, covers off the inside line. This will be on the restart. Slipped up into the marbles. And crap. he would have thought, where on earth did Lewis Leeds come from? He was third going into that corner. Pops out of the lead. It's now Fallon launching an attack on Will Brown, who's desperate for points. And Fallon hangs around the outside. We saw him doing this at Phillip Island through turn one. Now he does it at an equally menacing corner. Turn one at City Motorsport Park. Whoa, and man. there's contact down. At turn two, we saw these two cars into each other here last year, but it was Lewis Leeds in the yellow and black Dream Motorsport car, and Fallon has pulled off an absolute coup there. Terrific move. Great side-by-side -side racing through turn one, and good respect from oh. Will Brown, and now he's under pressure from Everingham in the Sid Chrome car. The JRD entered Cam's Jayco Australian for, uh, Formula 4 Championship contender, first time runner in the category, graduating out of V's in Victorian racing. Goes down the inside of the 99, has a big look. And the car's galore entries just unsettled a little bit there, so he's still under threat. This fight is still on for the race lead. Nick Rowe attacking Lewis Leeds. Probably not close enough to, to be able to launch an attack down the hill. Harry Hayak, we saw these boys almost arm in arm out there on the grid before the start of this race. But now it's serious business as we head off for the last lap. He's a Red Bull Junior racer. When you're part of that squad, you're usually sorted for life, but you need to pull results early on. You need to prove that you're worthy of having the Red Bull logo on your race suit. Whoa. Hayek, another moment, just like uh, down in race two and turn two, and that'll take him out of contention, but he'll still be on for third here. So if they finish the way they are, a couple of milestones, not only would it be the first ever race win for Lewis Leeds, it'd be a round win for Nick Rowe. He saw his championship position at the start of the round. He was desperate to come out of this round with a big points haul. At the moment, he's on track to do that and close that margin down to the BRM cars in front of the championship. So this bodes well going into the second half of the year, Chad. But what a drive from Lewis Leeds, all set up by that great move at Turn 2. These two have been so evenly matched in terms of pace. So he needed to make that move stick, which he did this time. One of the last few good passing opportunities. Doesn't happen there. For Nick Rowe, it looks like for the first time ever, we're going to have three different race winners in the one weekend in Cam's Jayco Formula 4. Rowe's got one last chance to get the lead back. He doesn't need to do it because he'll win the round anyway. It's not his style though, Richard. He wants to get back in there. You can see he's nibbling away. Is he close enough to draw level down the hill? Leeds will defend. But I think he's got enough. Great victory. His first in Formula 4. Lewis Leeds back in the category and gets a race win. And Nick Rowe, crucially for the championship, wins the round. That is big. And it's the first round win for AGI Sport. It comes on home turf as well. So the stranglehold of BRM for season 2016 is broken. But congratulations, Lewis Leeds. I know it's exactly what he came here to do. Win a race on home turf. I guess winning race is part of the fun that comes with it. But uh, yeah, full credit to Dream Motorsport. They set up the car perfectly. We knew we had a car that was more towards a long run. So um, those last few laps were really good for me. So I can't thank all the AGI Sport boys enough. We've done a bit of testing here and we got the car real hooked up and we were able to prove with consistent results that we can uh, win around and we got a pole a race win in two seconds. So what else could you want? So a big third round of the championship has shaken up the points. Will Brown goes back to the point and his teammate Jordan Love has had a bit of a shocker here, dropping back to third. And Nick Rowe, after a bit of a shaky start to the season, absolutely in contention. Well, from the Cam's Jaco Australian Formula 4 Championship, we turn our attention to GT Cars, the GT Trophy Enduro coming your way next.